Healthcare. I'm Steve and we're here again with another Maths Challenge. This is the 2021 Senior Maths Challenge, the most recent one that was done and that was sat in November um, 2021. You can see the date on the screen there. Um, uh, so I've not seen these questions before, we're doing this live and uh, as usual for those people who've not done one of these before, um, these are quite challenging maths questions. Uh, these are aimed at A-level students um, in the English school system and even amongst those it is tough um, so uh, we will do our best. I used to be a maths teacher but I'm a bit out of practice so we'll see if I can uh, at least attempt every question today. Um, the way it works is uh, the questions are multiple choice. You're advised not to guess, I'll talk about strategies for guessing potentially as we go through, maybe I make a guess or so, but usually I would not guess. Um, and you start with 25 marks, so look at number seven down here, you start with 25 marks. Uh, if you don't answer it, you score nothing, but you still got those 25 marks to start with. You get four marks for each one you get right, and one mark for each one you get wrong. So if you guess randomly, you would potentially finish with a score lower than 25 uh, if you're bad at guessing. Um, so we're going to give this a go, we're going to walk it through, it's a non-calculator paper and the people doing this get 90 minutes, although I'm going to be talking through uh, this live, so I uh, might take longer than 90 minutes. I'm also going to be doing this live on Twitch, so if you are a Twitch viewer and you want to follow me on Twitch, if you look at the link below, it'll give a link to my Twitch profile, subscribe on YouTube, all that sort of stuff, you see more of these. My aim is to go back and do all of them eventually, so all the math challenges. I'll do them as they come out and then I'll go back slowly and go back through some old math challenges. But uh, without further ado, um, we're gonna crack on and we're gonna go. Uh, Sicily had her 21st birthday in 1939. When did she have her 100th birthday? Uh, so if 1939 she was 21, she would have been born in 1918. Take 21 and then add 100, you get 2018. Uh, so the way I do the questions is I will work the question out and then look at the options and see if my answer's there. Some of the questions you can't do that with, but that, in, that encourages me not to make a random guess to start with. Sometimes I'll look at the answers and think it's probably this one, but let's work it out. But rarely do I just kind of go with a feel. Uh, the sequence formed from the sequence of primes by rounding each to the nearest to 10 begins... 0, 0, 10, 10, 10, 10, 20, 20, 20, 30. When continued, how many terms in sequence equal to 40? So numbers that round to 40 are anything between 35 and 44. And how many of these are prime? Well, 35 is, and it's got to be odd. So 37 is. 39 is, and that's 3, 13. 41, 43. So I think it's these three will round to 40. So I think it's three. The diagram shows two congruent regular pentagons and a triangle. The triangle is nothing special. Uh, the angles marked X are equal. What is the value of X? Uh, congruent means the same size and angles, and regular means all the angles and edges are the same. So we know that this triangle here is isosceles, so that's also X. So this angle at the top is going to be 180 minus 2X. And if these are pentagons, we know that the angles in a regular pentagon are 108. Um, the way you can do that, you can do 360 divided by 5 gets you 72. And that gets you the exterior angle. So that's 72. And so 108 is the interior one. So I'm just looking at this, this circle round X here. We've got the X. So there's 180 minus 2X plus two lots of 108, so 216 is 360. Um, and we're just going to do some algebra here. So we've got, so we've got minus x plus 216 is 180. Um, take off 180, 36 equals x, I believe, if you sort them around. Then that is one of our options. Feels like, for question three, that's more working out than normal, so maybe there's a quicker way of doing that. The positive integer k is the solution of the equation. k divided by 12 divided by 15 divided by k is 20. What is the sum of the digits of k? So we know that k, not, it's not k, it's a 4, k over 12 divided by 
15 over k is 20. This will rearrange to k squared over 15 twelves is 180 is 20, so k squared is 3,600, so k is 60. And the sum of the digits of k will be 6 plus 0, which would be 6. Um, it's positive integer, so it's positive 60, obviously. Um, this would have two solutions otherwise. Could be negative 60 if it didn't specify. The sum of four consecutive primes is itself prime. What is the largest of the four primes? So for it to be prime other than two, it has to be odd. And if you're adding four primes together and getting an odd answer, one of those must be two. So my guess is it's going to be two plus three plus five plus seven for the first four consecutive primes. And this gets you 17. So that is a prime. It has to be 7, and it's the only solution. There's no four consecutive primes you can add other than these, um, because it has to include 2. Three points, P, Q and R, placed on the circumference of a circle with centre O. The arc lengths P, Q, Q, R and R, P in the ratio of 1, 2, 1 to 2 to 3. What is the ratio of the areas of the sectors? P, O, Q, oh, okay, there's a lot of letters here. Um, uh, so, P, Q, R, I think that's it. So that gets you 60 degrees, that gets you 120. And that gives you 180. There's the basically you're just dividing 360 into that ratio, and you're going to get 60, 120, 180 um, for angles. But it, the angle will be related to the arc length. Um, so, what is the ratio and the areas of the sector? I think it's 1 to 2 to 3, I think. Because you're splitting into one sixth, two sixths, and three sixths. I think it's just B. I think that's just um, a very waffly question. Uh, it is not kill face kitten. This is a maths challenge. Have I got the wrong category on there? It should say maths, I think. Let's have a look. No, okay, so I need to change that. Edit stream info. Thank you very much. It didn't seem to work, but cheers, thanks for that. <laughs> yeah. Well this is this is not as easy as magic. <laughs> Which of these numbers is the largest? 2 to the power of 5,000, 3 to the power of 4,000, and so on. So we're not going to be able to work these out. My guess is, hmm, my guess is it's B or C. You just guess A. Let's see if we can do this. So this is, what if we do, that? we can say that's 2 to the power of 5 to the power of 1,000. And we can say that's 3 to the power of 4, to the power of a thousand and so on. And that's just six to the power of a thousand. So now if we can just look at what's got the largest base, it's not going to be six. This is going to be two to the five, that's thirty-two. Three to the four is eighty-one. Four to the three is sixty-four. Five squared is twenty-five, and then that's just going to be six. And all of these <clears throat> are going to be to the power of one thousand. So that if the largest base is eighty-one and they're all to the same power, that's the largest number. What is the area of the region inside the quadrilateral PQRS? Just as a general tip, it's never that one, usually.
Um, so, because this is 13 and 12, I think you can put a, five, a side of a 5 here and you get two right angle triangles. Because this is 5 from the 3 4 triangle, it then makes that a right angle for the 15 12 13 triangle, and that works because that is a Pythagorean triple. What's the area of the region inside the quadrilateral? So it's going to be the area of the large triangle, which is going to be 5 times 12 over 2. Subtract the smaller triangle, which is going to be 3 times 4 over 2. That's going to be 30. Subtract 6. It's going to be 24 units squared. There's no guarantee the large one was a right angle triangle, but when you get five as an answer, it's got to be. Alison has a set of ten fridge magnets showing the integers of 0 to 9 inclusive. How many different ways can she split the set into five pairs so the sum of each pair is a multiple of five? Well, 0 has to go with five. I'm just going to have to exhaust this out. My guess is it's two. One can go with four, or one can go with nine. Two can go with three, or maybe it's four. Or two can go with eight. If she does this, then the rest is forced, I think. So now it's forced, so 6 has to go with 9, 7 has to go with 8, and here, 3 has to go with 7, 4 has to go with 6. However, you can swap these two round as well. So you've got these two combinations, and then you've got the combination starting with not 5, 1, 4, 2, 8, um, 3, 7, 6, 9. And then you've got the combination not 5, 1, 9, 2, 3. Uh, oh dear, come on, Steve. <laughs> Uh, four, six, eight, seven. So I think there's four combinations. I think that's four combinations there. But once you do three pairs, the last two are forced. <clears throat> and that's not got a restriction. So there's two ways of doing that pair, two ways of doing that pair, and everything else is forced. So two times two is four. Should get you four options, I think. Yeah, I don't think I've done that in an elegant way there. In a survey, people were asked to name their favourite. People were asked to name their favourite fruit pie. The pie chart shows the outcome. It's a pie chart about pies. The angle shown exact with no rounding. What's the smallest number of people who could have been surveyed? So, to get forty, you need. 40 out of 360, which simplifies to 1 in 9. GCD, I don't know what GCD stands for. This is a uh, UK maths challenge. This is a set of 16 to 18 year olds. It's multiple choice. You get penalised if you get things wrong. Um, so any multiple of 9 will get you Oh, great, it's coming to Bazzi. Yeah, I think you're right. I'm just faff faffing about for the moment. Apologies. Um, so 140 out of 360 gets us 7 out of uh, 18. Um, 
Um, mm. And then any kind of multiple of that. Which means that that could be 2 out of 18. So, so far it could be 18. Uh, the next one, 72 out of 360 is a fifth. Which means the lowest common multiple of 18 and 5 is 90. So this is going to be uh, 10 out of 90. 35 out of 90. And... 18 out of 90. And then the last one we're checking is the 108. So 108 out of 360 is... Uh, what's that going to be? 3 tenths. Divide through by 36. 3 tenths also goes up to 90. So 3 tenths gets you 27 ninetieths. So there's 27 people said cherry, 18 people said rhubarb, 35 people said apple and 10 said plum. So I believe 90 or any multiple of 90 will work as well if, as long as they're in that ratio. Mm. Alita claims that if P is an odd prime, then P squared minus 2 is also an odd prime. Which of the following values of P is a counterexample to this claim? Well, 9 isn't prime, so that won't work. 3 squared minus 2 is 7, that works. 5 squared minus 2 is 23, that works. 7 squared minus 2 is 47, that works. It's probably this one. 11 squared minus 2 is 119, which is 7 17 so That is not prime, that is 7 17 So it's going to be that one as a counterexample to that statement. You don't need to check D because uh, P has to be an odd prime. For how many positive integers n is the remainder 6 when 111 is divided by n? So to divide this, to divide 111 by n and get a remainder of 6. You're looking at n must divide into 117. Is that right? And 117 is 329, 39s. And that is three um, thirteens. So the numbers that divide into 117 are three, one and 117, three and 39, um, nine and 13. These all go into 117, so if you divide 117 by all of these, you'll get a remainder of 6. Although 1 doesn't work and 3 doesn't work, so you can't get remainders of 6 there. So I think it's 4. I think if you divide 111 by these four numbers here, you get a remainder of 6. could try, if I had time at the end, I would try that, I would just divide them all by, I divide 111 by all of these and see what I get, but I believe that's right, because 9 13s is 117, so 9 and 13 both work, 39 goes into 117 exactly, so that works, and then 117 does as well. Which of these is the mean of the other four? Well, it won't be that one, and it won't be that one, because um, do they all simplify? They all simplify. This is root 2, this is 3 root 2, this is 10 root 2, this is 4 root 2, this is 2 root 2, 
And then the mean of these is 1, 4, 14, 18, 20. 20 root 2 over 5, which gets you 4 root 2, which is that one. Probably would not have been the one I guess. I probably would have guessed. Would I have guessed that one? I suppose this root 200 is so much smaller than the rest of them, isn't it? Yeah, larger than the rest of them. Hmm. Getting on to the tough ones now. What is the smallest number of rectangles, each measuring 2 by 3, which are needed to fit together without overlap to form a rectangle whose sides are in the ratio of 5 to 4? I don't want to have to draw this out. So. If the ratio is 5 to 4, the area would be 5 times 4 is 20. So the area would be 20, and the area of the small one is 6. So the area of a 2 by 3 is 6. And that needs to go into something that has an area of 20, some 20k, some, some multiple of 20. So, the first 6 that goes into multiple of 20 is um, 60, which means you're going to have 10 of them. Is it possible to do with 10 of them? That's the issue. If you have 10 of them, 60 is your area. And your sides would be 15, 12. That doesn't work, does it? To get an area of 60. Oh dear, what am I doing wrong here? My, my... First guess is 10, but I think my brain's going a bit skew if Because I can't find... If you've got 10 of them... Well, 60 will work, won't it? I guess um, maybe it's 20. Um, Route three. Mm, I'm going to come back to this one. I can't visualize it in my head. It feels like that ten is the wrong answer. Three dice, each showing the numbers one to six, are colored red, blue, and yellow, respectively. Each of the dice rolls once. The total of the numbers rolled is ten. In how many different ways can this happen? It's so another combinations one. We're just going to try and do this exhaustively. So what we're going to do is we've got red, blue, and yellow. Is we're going to work it out for just red being the lowest dice each time. So we've got red. So to get 10, you could have 1. And then the smallest you can have for B is... Uh, three and six and you've got one four and five and then i'm going to do the reverses so the six possible combinations of this top line you see and the six possible combinations of this second line because there are six combinations of having three things so i'm not going to write one six three 
because that's already going to be covered in my calculations. I'm going to kind of speed it up here. So uh, you can also have two. Um, two, two and six. And you've got two, three and five. And you've got two, four and four. And then if I do three, I'm going to get all the combinations I've already got because I've done the threes already. So I think this row has six possibilities. The possibility of having three things is there are six ways of putting these three numbers in order. There are six ways of doing these three. There's going to be six ways of doing these, but there's only going to be three ways of doing this because two of them are repeats. So you can't have reds are two, blues are two, yellows are six, and alternatively blues are two, reds are two, yellows are six, because you're already counting that. And same with this one here, three for that one. Six, twelve, eighteen, twenty-four, I think. If I did three, there's no two numbers I can get here that I haven't already got in a row at the top. Three, because you're missing, I'm trying to add up to ten, you're missing seven. You can either be 5 and 2, which is here, or 1 and 6, which is here. I know you can have 3, 3 and 4. Yeah, oh, it's a good thing I checked. And of that, there are three combinations. Uh, chat's just got it as well. 3, 3, 4. Thank you. It's a good thing I checked. And now I'm pretty sure I've got them all, because I've definitely done all the 4s, 5s and 6s. Um, but yeah, where red's the lowest dice, and then, yeah. Oh, no, okay. I've got to go on to my second slide. All right, so in theory, if you were doing a challenge from some of the younger students, you would get to the point here, is the point where you start getting penalised for getting things wrong. Uh, in the senior challenge, you get penalised whenever you get something wrong, so... Um, uh, well we, but I, I always segregate it into the first 15 and the last 10. Um, so here we are. An array of 25 equally spaced dots is drawn in a square grid as shown. Point O is at the bottom left corner. Linda wants to draw a straight line through the diagram which passes through O and exactly one other point. How many such lines can Linda draw? So if we consider this a coordinate grid, any of the, the, the dots above, why's my pen change colour? Any of the dots above O, you can't go through one without going through the rest. Exactly the same case is there. And exactly the same case is there. And exactly the same, if you imagine the line Y equals 2X, that will go through that dot and that dot. So there's no way to do a straight line that goes through one of those dots but not the other. And you've got exactly the same case for y equals a half x. If you can imagine this is on a coordinate axis. Uh, so that one you can hit, y equals 3x, y equals 4x, y equals 3 halves of x, y equals 4 thirds of x, and then um, Exactly the same mirror image, you can get that one, that one, that one, and that one. So you can get eight, I think. Now, if you extend the dots to another direction, you start getting to a point where those dots will hit other dots beyond it. Um, but I believe that's the case. I think you can do eight, as long as the lines are straight. They are straight lines. If they were curved lines, you could do as many as you want. circle of radius r and a right isosceles triangle are drawn such that one of the shorter sides of the triangle is the diameter of the circle. What is the shaded area? Oh, in terms of r. So the circle, and my guess is we will need that line there. So that's r, that's r, that's r, that's r and that's 2r.
Deathly Hallows. Don't know what that means. Well, I know it's Harry Potter, but... So that's going to be half R squared. And that's going to be pi R squared over 4. And that section there is going to be the difference between these two. So that section there is going to be pi r squared over 4 subtract a half of r squared. And then this grey section here will be uh, the area of the triangle take away the area of these two things here. So the area of the triangle is going to be, so I'm just going to, the triangle, this just is not an elegant way of doing this, is going to be 2r times 2r divided by 2. It'll be 2r squared. And then you're going to add on pi r squared over 4 take half r squared, which is the area of the little shaded bit of the top, that bit there. And then you're going to subtract the white bit to the left of the diameter, which is going to subtract, you're going to subtract pi r squared over 4. And you're going to subtract half r squared. So it's going to be, so let's just change pen here. So that cancels with that, but the other two are the same, they're both negative. So you're going to get 2r squared minus r squared. It's going to be r squared. Okay, it is an option, we'll put that down. Yeah, it's nice when they. It's nice when they kind of simplify like that. I like things that simplify elegantly. Number 840 can be written as P factorial over Q factorial, where P and Q are positive integers less than 10. What is the value of P plus Q? I agree, yeah, I love it. That is um, the fact that that will be the case for any circle, that those two areas added together get you the radius squared. It's lovely that, isn't it? Um, what is the value of p plus q? Note that n factorial is all the numbers 1 up to n multiplied. The range of okay. So this is going to be about factors. Now 840 it divides by 5. So it has to have a factor of 5 in it. So you know that Q has to be less than 5 because P has to have an extra factor of 5 in it. So P is going to be, for example, 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And what you're looking to do is to divide it by Q, where Q is the converse, and then to a point where you stop Q at a certain point so that you cancel out all the things you don't want, and then P is just going to be some large multiple of things. Now, the way it works is that P has to have a 5 in it, and it has to have a 7 in it, because 840 is 7, um, 7 12s, 720s, isn't it? So, 840 is 7 times 120, but we know 5's there, which means 6 has to be there. Uh, 5 times 6 is 30, 7 times 210, we need a 4, that gets me 840. Okay, which means that P has to be 7 and Q has to be 3. So 7 factorial over 3 factorial leaves you with this bit here. Uh, so the value of P plus Q is 10. The diagram shows two overlapping triangles, triangle FGH with interior angles 60, 30, 90, and triangle EGH, which is a right angled isosceles triangle. What is the ratio of the area triangle IFG to the area of triangle IEH? 
All right, so if this is 60, 30, you know that the sides are the ratio two to one because it's, it gets you sine of 30 is a half. Oh no, it's not true, apologies. Sine of 30 is a half means if this is one, this is two, and this one is root two, And if that's the case, the larger triangle will be just doing reverse Pythagoras on the large triangle. This is on it. So that's if that's two, we're trying to work out this side here. Let's call it x. So x, two x squared equals four. X squared is two. X is root two. So that's also root two, and that's also root two. That one going up there. So the areas of the triangle. The small one is going to be root 2 over 2, and then the large one is going to be 2 over 2. So it's 1 square root 3 over 2. You are absolutely right. You are absolutely right. Thank you. That is root 3 over 2. Aha, uh -huh. so root 3 over 2. So that's the small triangle. And then the large triangle is going to be root 2 times root 2 over 2. The large triangle is going to have an area of 1. So the area of the triangle IFG to IEH. Oh, hang on. We're looking for these two little ones, aren't we? I was doing the large triangle, the two large ones. Um, hmm. I think I read the question again. I was going to guess C there because uh, um, hmm. All right, see you in a bit, Stephen. Um. went down the wrong route there, I misread the question. I was trying to do the ratio of the two large ones. So, are these similar? They are similar, aren't they? So I'm just going to get a different pen. This angle here is 45, which means that angle has 15. And this angle is 30, which means that angle has 15. They both have a right angle and an angle the same. Which means they're similar and so you're looking for uh, a multiple to get from um, which edge is the same from 1 to root 2 so it's going to be B I think uh, so basically the ratio of that to that is going to be the ratio of Oh, the ratio of the areas, so if the scale factor ratio is root 2, the, rate, the area is root 2 squared, so the area ratio is going to be that one. Yeah, so the scale factor for the length is root 2, but the scale factor of the area is the length scale factor squared, which is um, root 2 squared, which is 2. Sorry, that was, um, that was tough. For question 19, that was a tough one. Right, wake up, Steve. Laura and Dina 
have a running race. Laura runs at constant speed and Dina runs n times as fast, where n is more than one. Laura starts s meters in front of Dina. What distance in meters does Dina run before she overtakes Laura? Right, so Dina is here, Laura is here, Laura, it's not a four, it's an L. And that's an S. And then they run. And then they catch up. And so, what distance in metres is Dina run? D is the whole thing here. So the length of that one is D minus S. And the length of the whole thing is D. And then if Laura's speed is... Too many letters. Oh, uh, so Laura runs at a meters per second, and Dina's speed will be na. Will it cancel out? Oh God! All right, so. So time is distance over speed. Oh, too many letters. So for Laura's speed is A meters per second. Dina's speed is NA meters per second. So the time it takes them both to run from here to the point where they meet is the same. So we know that Laura's distance divided by Laura's speed equals Dina's distance divided by Dina's speed. If you multiply both sides through by A, you get D minus S equals D over N. And I'm just going to rearrange this to get D equals um, so you've got nd minus ns equals d, nd minus d equals ns, d equals ns over n minus 1. Is that an option? Yeah, yeah, didn't like that. Dude, did not like that. How many different letters do we have to deal with here? We have Laura and Dina. The fact that they gave you a girl's name starting with D, when D is a distance, wasn't very nice. Then you have lower speed, time, distance, and S, and N. Yeah, I didn't like that. The numbers M and K satisfy the equations. 2 to the power M plus 2 to the power K equals P, and 2 to the power M minus 2 to the power K equals Q. Ah, I chose to make D a distance. I could have said L for length as well. Yes, thank you, Brad. Yeah, surprising you're still watching this, to be honest. Aren't you working? <laughs> Imagine, I don't know if you're on holiday at the moment. Uh, what is the value of 2 to the power M plus K in terms of P and Q? Well, I don't know what to do here, so I'm going to pretend they're simultaneous equations and try and solve them. So you've got 2, 2 m's equals p plus q. So basically, I'm adding the two equations together. Uh, 
Oh, and you can say this 2 to the m is p plus q over 2. And you can do exactly the same thing with the other one um, by subtracting them instead. And you get 2 times 2 to the k uh, equals p minus q. 2 to the k equals p minus q over 2. Hold that erect into the tenth. That should be nice. I'm going to have some free time on my hand shortly, a lot of free time, so I'm going to be doing a lot more streaming, so I will probably try and do some more crosswords, maybe not as hard as the ones you make, or at least I'm not attempting that. I'm not attempting those by myself. I looked at the one you sent me yesterday, and I could do one question, which was the um, the running, running away question without spoiling it. So, if you multiply these two together, you get two to the m plus k. So you multiply that by that, which gets you p plus q, p minus q over 4, which is the top, the top, the, the uh, numerator is the difference of two squares, so it's that one. No, it's not. Apologies, almost got that wrong. It's this one. Ooh. Stephen. Yeah, I didn't know what to do there, so I just I just uh, went down my route of solving simultaneous equations by trying to work some stuff out. A triangle with interior angles 60, 45, and 75 is inscribed in a circle of radius 2. What is the area of the triangle? Well, I'm going to need a diagram here, so we go... Um, 60, 75, and 40, I don't know which one's which. This is bad, it's a bad drawing. So 75 is that one, and then that one looks bigger than the other one, 60 and 40. Um, my guess is I'm going to need to, so inscribe means all, all the vertices of the triangle uh, lie on the edge of the circle. So my guess is I'm going to need to draw at least one of these in because that gets you a two. You need a you need a length, so you need to use the fact that it's two. So if we draw these in, so only way we can work out the area of these three triangles. That's twenty. Um, this is going to be eighty because it's the it's twice the angle at the edge. Uh, so this is this, this makes this one twenty, and this makes this one fifty. And can we use the cosine rule for these? They all have two edges, don't they? Or half A, B, sine C. Okay, so we can just do that. However, we don't know what sine of 80 is, do we? You don't, you don't think you need sine of 80. You might have to give me a hand here. So basically, I can work out, let's call them triangle A, B, and C. I can work out triangle A and B, but I'm struggling to see how to work out the area of triangle C. Uh, have I done the maths wrong? 150, 270, 360. Well, while chat is helping me here, I'm just going to work out the ones I do know. So triangle A is uh, a half 
times 2 times 2 times sine 150 and triangle B is a half times 2 times 2 times sine 120. Now sine 150 is a half, so this is going to be 1. Sine of 120 is root 3 over 2. Um, so this is going to be root 3 over 2, this is going to be 4, root 3 over 4, this is going to be root 3. So I already know it's not B because it's going to be there's going to be a root 3 in the angle. Have I added them up wrong? Oh, I've added them up wrong. So what, have I, what am I doing wrong then? Oh, that's 45. Thank you, Brad. 45, 90. And then this last one is going to be triangle C. Thank you very much, Brad. I even added them up a second time. Thinking I've done it wrong. Okay, oops. It's me, me mistranscribing a number. It's going to be half times 2 times 2 times sine of 90. Well, sine of 90 is 1, so it's going to be half of 4 is 2. So in total, it's going to be 3 plus root 3. Thank you, Brad. Right. Well, I've missed one out, but so far, it's been okay, I think. Question 19 was a fiddly one. Let x be a real number. What is the minimum value of that? x squared minus 4x plus 3, x squared plus 4x plus 3. Well, they both factorise, which means that the graph of that function will cross the x-axis four times, which means the lowest value has got to be a negative. So we know that that factorises into x take 3, x take 1, x plus 3, x plus 1. And so you've got, there's a sketch of this, I'm not imagining the sketch won't help, there's a sketch of this, it hits at positive 9, and it's got uh, 1, 3, 1, 3. It looks sort of symmetrical, this does. And so it's going to go, because it's a quartic, it's going to go like whoop, 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 whoop. So it's going to be that value and that value. So we could. I mean, if I was running out of time, what I would do is I would try two. I would substitute two in and see what we get. Hopefully, we'll get a negative, in which case, I mean, you're doing it right. So, two squared is four. Minus four, twos is take eight, plus three. So, that's negative one. And then x squared is four, plus four, twos is eight, is 12, plus three is 15. Negative 1 times 15 is negative 15. So when x is 2, uh, this expression is negative 15, which means the answer has to be that, although I can't see how to get that. So that's going to annoy me a bit. So it can't be, it can't be quite symmetrical, can it? Maybe. Or maybe the minimums of the here. Maybe if you try negative 2.5, uh, negative 2. Hmm. Hum, hum, hum. Well, I don't like guessing like this. I wonder if there's a way of doing this. Well, I'm pretty sure, I'm, I'm, like, I, I would be, assuming what I've done there isn't incorrect. In fact, it, yeah, I mean, I've substituted two in. Yes, hey, Smashy. So I'm pretty confident that I've got it right, but let's see if we can get a better way of doing this without just trying values. Multiply out, differentiate, and find the roots of the cubic. Usually, it won't be that hard. 
and that that assumes that we're gonna gonna get a cubic to solve x squared minus four x plus three x squared plus four x plus three so you're gonna get an x to the four um that's gonna cancel out with that whatever it is you're gonna get a minus sixteen x squared you're gonna get three x squared three x squared that's going to cancel out with that, and you're going to get 9. So there's actually some nice cancelling here. So you're going to get x to the 4, take 9x squared plus 9. Yeah, but it's whether it's the cubic's easy to solve is the issue. Um, weirdly, there's an actual better way, well, a different way of doing it. You can say that let, uh, let x squared equal y and you've got a hidden quadratic so you've got y squared minus 9y plus 9 and then you can just um, complete the square with this so you're going to get my minus have i done something wrong 4.5 squared oh, that's 10 that's why 10 10. Uh, 5 squared minus 25 plus 9 minus 16. So yeah, there's, a, there's the minus 16. You could, um, so if if you, you could definitely do this. You could differentiate it. Let's, well, while we're here, we'll do it. While we're here, we'll do it. We're just going to differentiate um, I haven't got any more space, so I'll just do it, do it down here. So let's say y equals that. So do y dx, or f dash x, or whatever, it gets you x cubed minus 20x. And that gets you, oh, hang on, so that gets you x, x squared minus 20. So x is 0. Which is that? Which will be the, one of the maximums, or uh, x is root twenty, and then you substitute, <laughs> substitute you substitute root twenty in here to get yeah that that would work as well. So you substitute root twenty into our original equation and get twenty minus four root twenty plus three, and so on. Hopefully that gets you sixteen. Smashy, you've received, you've redeemed a session review. Sure thing, my friend. Just uh, send me some boards. You're not convincing my algebra. Neither am I most of the time. I've got 16 in two different ways. What have I done wrong here? Yeah, so you're going to get, you're going to get, x is 0, and you're going to get x is plus or minus root 20. So you're going to get three solutions. And then you need one of the plus or minus root 20s to get you minus 16 when you substitute it in. You're going to get, I think you get three solutions, which gets you the three stationary points of the quartic. I think, and then from the graph that we had earlier, you're going to get one of the, the maximum will be where um, x is zero, which means it's the place where it crosses the y-axis and the two minimums. I should end up with x squared minus nine and x squared minus one. Oh, you mean when I substitute? Oh, you mean you're, oh, so you're questioning my middle section? Yeah, but so what you're what you're doing now? Yeah, but what you're doing is trying to find you're trying to find the 
x-intercepts, I'm trying to find the minimum. So you will get your x-intercepts from what you've got there. In fact, you will get, from what you've got, you will get this. If you expand this out, you will get what you've just said to me there. x minus c times x plus 3 gives you the x squared minus 9, and then the x minus 1, x plus 1 gets you the x squared minus 1. So yeah, you do get that, but I believe that will get you the intercepts when we're looking for the minimum. So I'm going to move on now because uh, this is going to be a YouTube video and people can't see our conversation, I'm afraid. <laughs> they, can, they can hear me, but they can't see what you're saying. So, Saba, Ryan and Darren are cooperating to complete a task. They each work at a constant rate, independent of whoever else is working on the task. When all three work together, it takes five minutes to complete the task. When Sab is working Darren, the task takes seven minutes. And when Rayan is working Darren, the task takes 15 minutes. How many minutes does it take for Darren to complete the task on her own? <laughs> so, rate of work. It's inverse proportion, isn't it? So, We'll say that it's S, R, and D. So the task divided by S plus R plus D is five minutes, which means that the task is five lots of S plus R plus D. And then separately, the same task divided by just S plus D gets you seven. So the task in this case is seven lots of S plus D. And then finally, the task divided by R plus D gets you 15, which means 15 R plus D. So, with that in mind, I need some space, I'm going to run out of space here. So, with that in mind, are we just substituting things in? So, we can eliminate... Trying not to try not to eliminate D. Um, the so we know that seven S plus seven D is five S plus five R plus five D, and we know that two S is. 5r minus 2d. So s is 5 halves of r minus 2d. Which means that go, substituting that into... I think I'm doing wrong here. And then if you substitute that into the third one, you can't because you've got it in terms of S. We really need to do it in terms of R. All right, so we, we delete that. All 
I'm just, I feel I'm messing this up. So we, if we go back to this one, we're going to do it in terms of R, so you're going to get 2S plus 2D over 5 is R, and then we're going to substitute that into this last equation. So we're going to say 15 lots of No, uh, my mind's gone. I've lost it. <clears throat> oh, I'll come back to that one, right. There's two I'm going back to. I like shape questions. So maybe this isn't a difficult one, or I imagine it will be. Five line segments five line segments of lengths two, 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 one and three connect two corners of a square as shown in the diagram. So two Two, two, one, and three. What is the shaded area? Don't know how big the square is, do we? And there's no, <laughs> there are no convenient ways to. Work it out, are there? There's no convenient ways to split this into. Can anyone see anything? There's no convenient ways to split this into shapes we can do, is there? Because if you cut there, you don't have that length, but you also cut this into some weird shape, and you don't have that length, and you can't cut it that way because you don't have that length. So, hmm. So a way of working out the length of the square. My guess is it's got to be something diagonally because all your lengths are going from bottom left to top right. So if you drew a line that went there, Any way of working out that length? So that's one, and that's one. We don't have the whole length there. Oh, uh, these triangles are. Uh, these triangles are similar. So what I mean by that is that is similar to that, that little one. So, does that help us? Well, we do know that the, the length of the left-hand side of A is five, so A, if we just kind of draw this out, We know that's fine, they're similar because these angles are the same here. They're both angle triangles and they have opposite angles equal. So that's 5 and that is 2, which means that the, along, with, along this line here, that's got to be, the whole length is 1, so that's got to be 5 sevenths and that's got to be 2 sevenths. Which means that the length of the diagonal, this is so... Oh. The length of the diagonal is going to be the square root of 2 squared plus 2 sevenths squared. You think the main diagonal has got to be 7 long?
I think it's longer than that. I think looking at the two triangles we've got, the main diagonal is um, is this bit plus this bit, and they're both longer than they're both hypotenuses, so they must be longer than five, and so they must be longer than seven. So anyway, this this bit here is going to be oh dear, it's a square root of the uh, two seventh squared is four. It's going to be the square root of four plus four forty ninths. Oh dear. Hopefully this simplifies, and then the other one is going to be the square root of five squared plus five root seven. 5 sevenths squared yeah, is going to be 25 plus 25 49ths. I mean, this doesn't help you work out the length of the square, does it? Maybe we don't need that. I've got to need that, surely. So the whole length of the diagonal, this is where I'm going to... I believe is the square root of 4 plus 4 49ths plus the square root of 5 plus 25 or 25 plus 25 49ths. Now I think it's got to be longer than 7. If you, if you imagine you've got two lines like this that are 7 long that aren't on the diagonal, and the, the diagonal's going through the middle. If you, if you, if you, if you think they're seven long because they're, they're lined up like that, which they are, but they're shifted, there's no way you could turn them so they'll touch. Because the thing about being is opening a door, when you're opening this door, the furthest this way it goes is when it's closed. And the same with that one. So even if they're level in terms of their level, because there's a perpendicular line joining them, there's no way they'll meet when you when you fix them at the corners and swing them in. <clears throat> so I think the diagonal is that, and if we square root that, we get um, the length of one side of the square root. I don't think it helps because there's no way I can do that. I don't think that is not a nice number mm. and if I can't work out the length of one edge of the square I don't think I can work out the individual bits because I need I need to work out something to do with this bit or this bit to work out either of those I'm going to need to know the length of Yeah. I'm going to pass on this one as well. So we're going to go back to 14 and chat can help now. So 14 we didn't do. So 14, I'll read it again. What is the smallest number of rectangles, each measuring 2 by 3, which are needed to fit together without overlap to form a rectangle whose sides are in the ratio of 5 to 4? Now the area of one of the Small triangles is six. Okay, go back. So someone in chat is saying, so you have the diagonal, so you can calculate the area of the two triangles you constructed. I can do that, yeah. Taken together with the two by one rectangle you excluded. No, because the problem with that, so my problem is I need to work out this bit this, uh, this white area, if I'm working out that that's two and then this white area is just like 
one and a bit or whatever it might be. And to work out the area of the shaded bit, I'm going to need to know the whole square. And I don't know the length of the square. I mean, I do, it's this, but I don't think I can square that and get something nice. So, although I have it, and if I had a calculator, I could do it. I imagine if you put this in a calculator, you might get a nicer answer than I'm going to get. So, yeah. Each measure. My guess is 10. That's what I want to guess, but I think it's wrong, because I, when I was thinking of 10, I was trying to construct a 10. Yeah, it's a non-calculated paper. So I have the diagonal, and given this diagonal, I can work out the length of one edge of the square. However, I can't. <laughs> I don't think I can do it from that. So I think either I've made a mistake or there's a, there's a way of simplifying this that I'm just not seeing. In theory, if this is the diagonal, you could then work out one edge of this by square rooting this, but I wouldn't want to like square rooting and halving it, you know. I, uh, I, it's beyond me, I'm afraid, Ewan, but thanks, thanks. Yeah, I definitely can do it. I def I've definitely got the right bits to do it, but um, I'm missing something. What is this small? Has anyone got any clue on this one? I'm, I'm going to guess... The scale factor from the small to the large one is two fifths, but like I say, so like I say, without knowing the edge of one of the squares, I don't think I can work out either the awkward bits in the shaded area or the white bit on the right. Um, so I don't think I can work out that this is the area I want to work out, this 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 large triangle here, because then I know all the bits. I, I know the whole square and I can take this triangle off and add the shaded bits and take the rectangle off but I need to know the side length of a square. And I think the side length of the square, that's the hypotenuse, this number here. And uh, I just can't do it. So I think I'm going to pass an hour. And I think I might have to pass on this one as well. I can I don't think it's 10. Maybe it's 10. Can we can we do it so it's ten? So if it's two by three, we can and it's sixty and sixty is I don't think it's ten because the reason is I can't think of two numbers of time to make sixty, which are in the ratio of five to four. So so the ratio five to four If you think of factors of 60, you've got, uh, and you need two of these at times to make 60 in the ratio of 5 to 4. So you've got 1 and 60, 2 and 30, 3 and 20, 4 and 15, 6 and 10. So 6 and 10 is close. So I don't think 60 works. And so the next number I'm thinking of is... One twenty. The next multiple of six that's in the twenty times table is one twenty. Uh, is there a one twenty? Is it fifteen? Uh, so one twenty is. Well, let's go for the middle. Twelve tens doesn't work. Oh, hang on. Twelve tens. Yes, it's going to be one twenty. And one hundred twenty. The if the area is one hundred twenty, you can have the sides twelve and ten, which means the sides in the ratio of five to four. And if the area is one hundred twenty. You can fit 20 sixes in there. There we go. That's how we do it. Can I come from the back? For the nested rectangles problem, I think you, you had the right idea with this one, but I think you want to forget that if you scale in one direction, you need to square the scaling factor to keep the ratios right. Oh, I exit me. 12 to 10 is in the ratio of 5 to 4. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I think you're right. I uh, That's why I couldn't do it. So basically, you can get... 
Twelve to ten, not five to four. I'm being stupid. You're absolutely right. It's not five to four. Oh dear. I don't get. I'm having a bad day today. I just. Oh, I just. I just went there. That's in the five to four time. It says twelve to ten. Doesn't work. So what are the next one? You've got fifteen to eight. So that doesn't work either. So one twenty doesn't work. So one eighty is 18 to 10, that doesn't work, you've got 12 to 15, that works, there we go, that is the ratio of 5 to 4, so 180 gets us 30, yeah, you're absolutely right, thank you Ewan, yeah, it should be multiple 6, so I've gone through the multiple 6's that also um, go into the ratio of 5 to 4, as in 5 to 4 is 20, so the area goes in multiples of 20. And the lowest multiple of 6 and 20 that has a ratio is 180, so it must be that one. 12 across 59. Right, I think we're going to mark it because I don't think I can solve this one, and I'm having a blank on this one. I think I'm doing the right thing, but I'm just bleh. So I'm actually just going to mark it now, so we will get the answers up and we will check how we've done. And I don't think I've ever got four marks on a senior one, but this time there's a couple of questions I haven't answered, so we will see how that goes. So, and then maybe if we've got time we'll have a look at uh, how to do the ones we couldn't do. So we're going to get our red pen out. And if you've been doing this song at home, number one is C. Number two is C. Number three is also C. Four is D. Five is E. Six is B. Six looked a bit too easy, to be honest. Or like maybe it was uh, it was there to trick you. Seven was B. I like that one. Eight was B as well. Nine is D. Did not like that one. Felt like you're not an other way. 10 is D as well. 11 is E. That was a bit easy. 12 uh, was A. So we've missed one out here. Oh, I've done the wrong way. It's not 117. So 105, effectively. Oh, I've been stupid here. So I've got this wrong. The correct answer is A. And the reason is we were doing the right idea, but we went the wrong way. So it's 105 is in the end times table, because 111 is 6 bigger. And how many different ways are there of making 105? Well, 105 is um, 15 sevens. And 15 is 3, 5. So 105 can be 1 times 105 or 3 times 35 or 5 times 21 or 7 times 15. And how many of these leave a multiple of 6 behind? Well, it can't be 1, 3, or 5, because they don't leave a remainder of 6. So it's these 5 here. So we did the right method, but uh, we went the wrong way. So we missed an answer. So it's actually 5. OK. Um, 13 is D. Yeah. Thanks for... You've been watching the whole time, Brad, and you didn't spot my mistake there. So I'm going to blame you for that one. 14 is D, so we've got that right. 15 is C. Thank you for the help on that chat. And then on to the hard ones now. Uh, 16 is C. 17 is B. That was lovely. Uh, I'm guessing you didn't spot it, is my guess. 18 is C. 19 is D. 20 is A. Didn't like that. It actually ended up being quite nice, but there's a lot of letters going on. 21 is A, that one was nice. 22 is E. Yeah, did maths wrong on that as well. All right, 23 is A. 
24, if you've done it, is E. Now, what are we doing? So, Yeah, we needed to eliminate D to work out S and then sub S into R and then we were doing the right thing. I just, my, my mind got a bit muddled there. So it's 105. You got D equals S over 14. W over D, yeah, and then you cancel out S, 15 times 7. And the last question is, if you've done it, B. So we didn't, so what are we missing? So we got, what am I doing wrong? Oh, ah, ah, okay. So we know that this is, this, this is the diagonal of the small triangle and we can say the diagonal of the whole thing because they are similar, you can multiply it. So you can say that the diagonal of the whole thing is uh, seven, half, seven halves bigger because this is two sevenths of the whole length. Um, seven halves times this. 4 plus 4 over 49, you can bring the 7 halves in and it cancels out to 5 root 2. So 7 halves gets you 49 over 4 times 4 plus 4 forty ninths. And then obviously the 49 over 4 cancel gets you 49 and the 49 times 4 over 49 gets you 1, gets you 50. So the square root of 50, square root of that, square root of that. Square root of 50 is uh, 5 root 2. And from that point, if I knew the diagonal was 5 root 2, you can work out that the edge is 5. So the edge is 5. Um, and then you just do what we were going to do with all the triangles. Uh, okay, that was quite nice. I missed that trick. So basically, we were right up until that point, and um, there was a quicker way of getting the whole length. So yeah, that was uh, I actually quite like that, even though I got it wrong. So how have we done? So score, we got twenty-five to start with. We got one wrong. We got two we didn't answer, and then that means we got 22. So in total, we got 112 out of uh, 125. That is our score today. Did you beat that? Are you doing this year's one and you're practicing last year's one for practice? If so, give us a pop down underneath. You can find the link to the paper underneath, the link to my Twitch channel underneath. And please subscribe because I'm going to be doing more of these going forward. Um, I'm going to hang out with my Twitch stream uh, now, but that's the end of the video. So um, we're exactly on 90 minutes, so we didn't, uh, we didn't take too long today. Um, but apologies for the errors and thanks for chat for keeping me right. And I'll see you soon. Peace out.